Hey everyone, my name is Ashley Rush and I'm an independent creative memories advisor located in North Carolina. Today, I'm here to talk to you guys about the Creative Memories Power Layout Kit. The Power Layout Kit comes with a Power Layout Box as well as some Power Layout Guides and I'm going to give you a quick tour. This is obviously an older version of the box, but the new version has remained pretty much the same. First of all, you get a 13 and a quarter by 13 and a quarter black box with a bungee cord closure. When you open the box, included inside are 15 plastic guides. These guides have handy dandy tabs located on either one of the sides or in the middle. Now what do you use this kit for? The kit is used to make scrapbooking easy and speedy. Let me show you how. Before you get started, you'll need to gather all of the photos and memorabilia you plan on using with your project. I like to print my photos with creative memories because not only do they print it with the time and date on the back, but they also print a project title so that you can easily organize all of your photos. I also have my folder here that I've already organized all of my postcards, memorabilia, other pamphlets from my trip. If you guys missed that, I can link the video to you in the description. The first thing you're going to need to do is get all of your photos in order and how you want them to appear in your album. They don't necessarily have to be this picture before that picture, but general clumps of what belongs together. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to start by demonstrating with just one guide. I feel like that will make it easier for you guys to visualize. But stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll have a stop motion guide showing it with a much larger selection of materials. So now that I've sorted my photos and laid out my guides, it's time to add my photos to the guides. So to do this step, I just work through that sorted pile of photos, grab groups that go together, and simply put them on a single guide, and then I'd move on to the next one. Once you've added your pictures, it's time to go back through and lay out any memorabilia you may have saved. For instance, I saved this business card from the lefty's left-handed store when we visited with my very left-handed daughter. The next step will be up to personal preference. You can now either go through all of your layout guides and add the papers you intend on using, or you can add just little snippets that you think might look good on the pages, like stickers, borders that you've already made, or maybe a special paper that you know you've been saving for the project. If you're gonna be adding all of the background papers, I have a handy dandy tip for you. I like to turn my layout guides upside down so that instead of focusing on what's going on on the pictures, I'm really just looking at the colors that are on the pictures. And that'll help me decide on adding layout colors without having to worry too much about what's going on. For me, my preference is just to add little special pieces that I know I want to use. For example, I've been holding on to this sheet of paper from our Open Road um, theme pack. If um, I just like that the arrows are all pointing in different directions, it sort of makes me think of pointing left and other things like that. So I want to make sure that I use this sheet of paper with these photos and I'm just going to add that to my pile and move on. Once I've laid out all of my pieces, it's time to stack it up and store inside of the box. Make sure you start from the last page and work your way forward. So the last page will be on the bottom, then the second to last, third to last, and so on until you make your way to the front. I also generally like to put another blank guide on top just to protect all of the contents. Once everything's all stacked up, you just pick up your pile and store it inside of your box. When your layouts are stored safely inside your box, you can close the lid bungee it shut, and pack this away for travels to all of your different scrapbooking events. When you arrive at your event, you can just unpack your box, unbungee the lid, and, perf 
and carefully remove the guides from the box and start on your projects. You can do one of two things depending upon how you like to work. You can remove the layers one at a time and work with the, the products you see available. Or if you're like me and you're a little ADD and you like to work on what you want to work on when you feel like it, just sort of thumb through the layers and pick a page to work on. Just make sure you put it back in order when you're done. You can store completed pages in the same spot on their layout guides. That way, when your album's all done, your pages are there and you can put your album together quickly. Here's a little stop motion video of how the process works on a grander scale. First, lay out your power layout guides. Next, divvy up your photos onto the guides in the order you want them to appear in your album. Add any memorabilia to the pages where you want them to appear. Go through and either add the paper you plan on using as the background or any extra stickers or borders or papers you've been saving for this particular scrapbook. When you're done adding all of the elements, stack the layouts guides starting from the back of the book working towards the front. Add the layouts to the box, close the lid, bungee it shut, and move on. Remember, you get 15 guides with your project, but you can always purchase more separately. Your power layout box is great for more than just planning out your scrapbook albums. I use it to store oversized memorabilia like certificates and booklets. I use it to store my children's artwork that they bring home from school. I also use it to, sh to store completed pages that aren't ready to go in an album yet, but I wanna keep them organized all together. Do you have a use for the power layout box and power layout guides that I didn't mention? If so, I'd love to hear them. Thanks for watching. Make sure you guys like and subscribe, and I'll see you again next week. Bye.